Thank you for joining us. Please leave a comment. Let's see who joined us. The live session today. Better was I on your feet. Take over. Jesus, take over. Thank you for joining us. Please leave a comment. Let's know who joined us. Good morning. Please leave a comment. Let's see who is joining us. Take over. Jesus, take over. Take over. Jesus, take over. We cannot see you as you are unless you take over. We cannot know you the way you are unless you take over. We cannot know you the way you are. Holy Ghost, take over, take over, Jesus, take over, take over, Jesus, take over. Jidin, good morning. Oh, your phone is giving you a little problem. So sorry about that. Oh, so hard. Good morning. You've been away for so long. Come on. How, how could you just abandon me like that? That's not fair. <laughs> how could you just abandon me like that? That's not fair, so hard. Thank you for joining us. Please leave a comment as you are joining. Let's know who is joining us. Let's welcome you. Take over. Jesus, take over. Take over. Jesus, take over. I cannot see you as you are. Unless you take over, I cannot know you as you are. You know, you should feel bad. <laughs> Somehow you should feel bad because I've been feeling very alone. And that's not correct. You abandoned me. That's punishable by the law. The Lord is watching you. <laughs> I cannot do this on my own. 
Unless you take over, I cannot do this by myself. Holy Ghost, take over. Take over. Jesus, take over. Take over. Jesus, take over. We cannot know you the way you are. Holy Ghost, take over. We cannot see you as you are. Unless you take over. We cannot do things the way you want. Holy Ghost, take over. Take over. Jesus, take over. Take over. Jesus, take over. I cannot do this by my strength. Unless you take over. I am tired of myself. Holy Ghost, take over. I cannot succeed by myself unless you take over. Take over. Jesus, take over. Take over. Jesus, take over. I am tired of myself. Lord, please take over. I am tired of myself. Lord, please take over. I cannot do this by myself. Father, please take over. I cannot win this on my own. Holy Ghost, take over. Take over. Oh, Father, we thank you. Jesus, take over. We give you all the glory, Jesus. We exalt your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we worship. Amen. We have been having sessions on marriage in the past few days. HD, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us. So glad to have you join us. We have been looking at marriage in the past few days. And the reaction I got was, it got me shocked, honestly. Like the things I was sharing, believing that, like that's, those are the basics of marriage. And many people were hearing it for the first time. <laughs> At some point, Pastor Rich told me they were in shock. And I was wondering, from the, it came across from those who were believing God for marriage to those who have been married. And then I'm wondering, if we don't even know the, 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 the basics of what God says about marriage, how can we then succeed in it? The Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And I left that session actually pondering to myself. Maybe I should just go back doing what the people want me to do. Oh, Sofa, you see why I missed you? Come on, people. Sofa says, please like the video. Do that for us, please. So how do you succeed in marriage if you don't even know why, why the person who instituted marriage, what was his objective? instituting the marriage how do you get to succeed in it how does god help you to succeed if you don't know what it's supposed to entail and the reaction actually got me thinking should i just go back to praying for people doing my warfare praying and getting people to receive connect to prayers and we trust God. 
or I should actually continue teaching. Because at some point I felt like what I was teaching was beyond my audience. Who has been able to watch any of the sessions, the last two sessions we have had? Judy, have you been there? Have you followed the last two sessions we have had? Thank you, family, for joining us. Please, please, please leave a comment. Let me officially welcome you. That's the right thing to do. When you step into a house, knock the door and let, the, let someone tell you, thank you, welcome. You are, you are so welcome. Sit down. Feel comfortable. Feel right at home. That's the right way to go about it. So thank you, family, for joining me. Please do leave a comment. Maki, thank you for joining us. Maki, you're welcome. So glad to have you join us today. Who else is joining us? Come on, I have at least eight people joining me right here, right now. Come on, people, come on, come on, come on, say hello. I want to say hello to you. Nine people joining us right now. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Victoria, you're welcome. So glad to have you join us today again. Ah, it means the teaching didn't send you away. <laughs> Victoria, you came back today. It means you didn't run. Fewa, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Victoria, are you, you are ready for more? Yes, please watch the, re the replay of the last session. Oh, thank you, Victoria. I love you too. At least I have someone who came back ready for more. <laughs> so we can continue from where we ended. Thank you, family. Please like the video if you are just joining us. Please like the video. Give the video a thumbs up so the algorithm can increase and so the video can appear on more so more people can get to see the video and get to join us thank you for obedience thank you okay we are ready we are ready we are ready victoria is ready sopa is ready so let's do this let's do this let's go but we are not done from the passage i can preach from this same passage from this same scripture i can preach for one year from there we can have teachings every day. Oh, HD is ready as well. Then that's awesome. Let's get going. Let's get going. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Please fill my mouth when I open it. Minister to someone here in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We've been reading from the book of Genesis chapter 2 from verse 15 to verse 25. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 15 to verse 25. And today I want to start by, I, I, I want to look at, I think I have more women here than men. Let's, let's start with ladies, right? What you should expect from a man that wants to get married to you. Oh, thank you, Maki, thank you. When a man comes to you as a Christian lady, when a man comes to you that they want to, they are interested in you, what are the things you should be looking for? What should you be looking out for? After that, now we are going to look for what the, 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 the woman is supposed to, what qualifies the woman for, for a wife. What, there are women and there are wives. Now, it is not marriage that makes you a wife. The Bible says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. It means, in other words, that you become a wife before you are found. It is the fact that you have become a wife that enables the, the kingdom spouse to find you. Amen, amen, Maki, amen. So when you become a wife, having a kingdom spouse Having a, a husband locate you is not going to be a prayer point. 
He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor. So as a matter of fact, when you become a wife, you become answered prayers to someone. When you become a wife, God is looking for which man to favor. And then he brings them towards you. So it means in other words, that if you are still single and believing God and giving prayer points, the past few days I established the fact that God, it wasn't the intention of God for us to have to pray for marriage. No, it was God that looked at Adam and said, it was not good for this man to be alone. I will make for him a helper. Adam did not even know he needed a wife. Adam was busy fulfilling purpose. Oh, please, if you are joining us today, you've got to go back and watch the last two sessions. I captioned them, it is not good for you to be alone. Adam was busy fulfilling purpose. And then this happens. So, you, if, if, so God did not wait for Adam to have to pray for a wife. No, God came to Adam to give him a wife. So we are going to look, what is it? Where have you been going short? Why are, we st are you still believing God? It's not every man that God said, that God just says it's not good for them to be alone. No, there are some men that it is actually good, very good, excuse, very good for them to be alone. There are men that is good for them to be alone, but not, so why it is not good for some men to be alone? There are some that God by himself says it is good for this one to remain alone. Amen, Maki, amen. Come on, family, please give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment. Give the video a thumbs up, like the video and comment. Let me know who is joining us. I want to welcome you. Don't you want the woman of God to know you are there? Come on, that's the right thing to do. So let's start, let's start, let's start. Today I'm changing my Bible version. Today I'm, I want to read from... Today I'm reading from the Message Bible, but there are still some scriptures that I'll, I, 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 some verses that I will go back to the Amplified Bible to let us understand how the Amplified puts it. So let's let's get this party started. I have a good feeling about this session. It's going to be a good session. If you are just joining us, you are welcome. Aya, thank you for joining us. So glad to have you join us today. From the Genesis chapter 2, from verse 15. God took the man and set him down in the garden of Eden to work. To do what? To work. Oh, I love the message Bible. He says, God put man there to work. Remember what I told you in the last two days? Your work is what you were born to do, what you were created to do. Your job is what you do to earn a living. If you are lucky enough, your job can be your work. And sometimes your job could be preparation for your work. Who was I talking to yesterday? Was it Victoria? That I was saying to that if, if your job right now, you are feeling uncomfortable, but that what you are doing is what you are passionate about, then that could just be a place of internship. That could just be a place of rehearsals, preparing you for, for your work, preparing you for your purpose. Delilah, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. I'm glad to see those who were with us the last session. I'm glad to see them join us back today. It says, God took the man and set him down in the garden of Aden to walk the ground and to keep it in order to walk the ground and to keep it in order oh that's the right prayer oh hd that is the perfect prayer the right prayer is not for god to give you a kingdom spouse but for god to prepare you for god to make you a better kingdom spouse because the moment you have been prepared the moment you have been made certainly you have one God says the man should walk. The man should walk. And then the man should. Where are we? And then the man should keep it in order. The man should walk and then the man should keep the garden in order. 
Amen, Victoria. Amen. And then the man should keep the garden in order. God commanded the man, then God gave his word to the man. He says, you can eat from any tree in the garden, except, that, except from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat from it. The moment you eat from that tree, you are dead. Angela, you are welcome. God said, it's not good for the man to be alone. I'll make him a helper, a companion. And I love to add what the, what the Amplified Bible says. The Amplified Bible says, I'll make for him a helper that is suitable, adaptable, and complementary to him. Mrs. J, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us. Says, I'll make for him a helper that is suitable, complementary, and adaptable to him. So God formed from the dirt of the ground all the animals of the field and all the birds of the air. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. Whatever the name called, the, whatever the man called the living creatures, that was his name. The man named the cattle, named the birds of the air, named the wild animals. But he didn't find a suitable companion until you come to the realization that you need a spouse. Take note, I didn't say you want it, that you need it. Until you get to the point where even God realizes that you need it. And then you realize that you need to be married. Not that you want to be married. Not that you have a hunger for sex. That you need it. That it has become a necessity to you. When you need something, you value it. You will be able to do what it takes. Come on, people, give the video a thumbs up. Like the video. When you need something, you value it. When you need something, oh, yes, 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 Victoria, we are coming to that. When you need something, you value it. Equi OK Vision, thank you for joining us. When you need something, you va I'm doing the best I can. When you need something, you value it. When you need something, you keep it safe. When you need something, you go an extra mile to get it. And when you get it, you make sure that you keep it jealously. When you want something, it could just be to satisfy your, 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 your hunger or your appetite for that moment. After you are done wanting it, after you, you have your test satisfied, it could just be over. You can just walk out of it. So there is a difference. So God, God realized that this man needed a wife. And then God to test the man to see if the man would realize that indeed I need a companion. Indeed, I need a companion. Are we together? So God put the man into a deep sleep. As he slept, he removed one of his ribs and replaced it with flesh. God then used the rib that he had taken from the man to make woman and presented her. The Amplified Bible version says to make and to build the woman and presented her to the man. Finally born the man said, finally, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And named her woman. For she was made from man. Therefore, a man leaves his father and his mother. And embraces his wife. They become one flesh. The man, the two of them, the man and the woman were naked. But they felt no shame. Oh my God. Oh my God. Are you guys even ready for me? If you are ready for me, then you've got to. You've, you've got to interact. Oh, I, I, I'm laying a foundation. I'm, I, I'm just reading and I'm, and I'm already excited. So you've got to motivate me in this session. 
You know how to motivate me, right? Do you know by now how to... The first way to motivate me is by responding. I want it interact. I want to see the chats going up. To know I'm not alone. The second way to motivate me is with the dollar sign. <laughs> the third way to motivate me is if there are many people and they are coming, they are coming. So please like the video, like the video, family. Comment, like the video, do everything. Do your own role to motivate me. And I'll give you a good word. Do your own role. I'm here. The word is here. The spirit of God is here. Now I want to start by establishing a difference. A difference between the man and the woman in, their, in, in terms of their creation, in terms of their formation. Now, if we go back, if we, if we go back some few verses, Andrew, you're welcome. Yes, leave his father. Oh, you guys are already in the spirit. I'm going to love this session. If we, back, if, if we, if we go back a few verses to check on verse 7, verse 7 says, God formed the man out of the dust of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life and man came alive and became a living soul. God formed a man. God formed a man. And the word that is, that is used, the word that is, the Greek word that is used to mean form is actually, it means to squeeze. It means to press. It means to compress. So God took the dust and molded it, pressed it, compressed it, and squeezed it until the man was formed. And then when it came to the woman, the Bible says God took the rib. God took out the rib. God, God caused the man to go to, the, to sleep, to a deep sleep. One, one man of God says the reason why God caused the man to go to deep sleep is because if only, like the way many men cheat, if God had allowed the man to see what he was doing, by the next time God would have been coming for fellowship, the man would have been busy making for him a second for himself a second wife. That's just for fun. <laughs> I know my guys here don't cheat. That's for fun. That's just an aside. Oh, I'm I'm coming to that. All, all of you are in the spirit today. I'm loving this session. Oh, God help me. And I'm coming to that right they were naked and they felt no shame. I'm coming to that. God give me the grace and give me the time. So the, 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 so for, 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 for the man, God formed, God squeezed the man. God compressed the, the mud, the dust, the dirt to form the man. But the word that is used for the woman, the Bible says God took the rib out of the woman and made the, the, uh, the word that is used for the woman, is it, it, it could be interpreted as, translated as to build, to make or to build. And making takes a process. Building takes a process. So the man was formed, the man was compressed to being. And this, this establishes the basic difference between the man and the woman. That's why the man has the physical strength. The man has the physical strength. Because of the way the man was formed. The man was squeezed. And, 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 and some, somehow it's like, oh yes, the woman was built up. The man was squeezed. So the man, the, the, there was physical pressure applied to the man. So the, for, due to the formation of the man, the man has physical strength. The man has physical strength. But by the formation of the woman, and if we go further, we realize that the woman was not just built. While God was in the business of building the woman, God decided to alterate some things. Decided the first thing is that God gave the woman a womb which makes us an incubator, which makes the woman an incubator. God gives, gave the woman breasts, which are the vessels on, for, for nourishing and for comfort. So the build up and just the fact that the woman was built up and being built up, it takes a process. And to be built up, the woman, that, that, that's why the woman has internal strength. 
The man has physical strength. The woman has internal strength. And that's the reason why the woman can go through enormous pain and survive it. That's why we go through labor pain. Even without painkillers. We go through it over and over. Come on, I've seen women that gave birth to 10 children and there were no twins involved. And I asked myself, how did they do it? And guess what? Studies have shown and proven that a man cannot go through labor pain and survive. He will die. A man cannot go through labor pain and survive. He will die. But the woman goes through it over and over and comes out and in the next few, few minutes or hours, they are forgotten about it. They are ready to have another child. Because the woman has the internal strength. But the man, because of his formation, has the physical. That's why when the going gets tough, when the man feels challenged, those that don't know, those that are not man enough, they begin. I believe there's no one here that eats that beats up a, the woman. They, they use their own physical strength now on the woman. They, they begin to fight because God has given them physical strength. Hallelujah. But now I want us to look at this passage, but focus more on, look at the kind of man, what, which was the kind of man that God qualified to say it is not good for this man to be alone. Please, please, people, come on, like the video. We are more than 24 of us here. Give the video a thumbs up. We are more than 24 of us here, and many of us are not commenting. It means that you don't want me to continue this teaching. If you are not commenting, you are just watching me, it means you don't want me to continue with this session. I, I already started by establishing how I want it. I started by establishing how I want it. If you are quiet, it means I'm not blessing you. End the session. Just that simple. So the first thing about the man, and I believe I'm talking, is there anyone here that is not a Christian, that is not born again? I believe I'm talking to Christians. So the first thing that God established about the man that was formed was that God ensured his presence was there. God made the garden of Eden. And I told us in the last session yesterday that Eden talks about the presence of God. So God placed this man in his presence. So this was a man that is equally born again. So in other words, we are talking about born, being born again. So this man was be, must be a man who is not just born again, but loves the presence of God. Loves the things of God. Lives by the word of God. Likewise the woman. Because God didn't go to out, outside of that garden of Eden to bring the woman. So the man that is good for you, the man that God says it's not good for them to be alone, is a man who one understands what it means to be in the presence of God. Understands what it means to have God as their Lord and Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Understand what is understands what it means. And then the second thing was that God placed him in the garden to work. And I already established the fact that that work is talking about purpose fulfillment. So the man was busy in purpose. Because the woman is called to follow. You are supposed to submit your life under this man. You cannot follow someone who is going nowhere. Emily, thank you for joining us. Amen, amen, Emily, thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. A better day for you too. Achana, you are welcome. Yeah, please, you can always come later and replay. And thank you for that. Thank you for that. So the, the man must be in purpose. The man must be doing something. The man must be working. At least even if he's not actively in purpose. He should be, he should have a vision. 
He should have so, a, a, so, a place where he's going. He should have, have something he's working on. The problem is that we carry love because you love. Come on, don't get driven away by your feelings and love. The Bible tells us in the book of Songs of Solomon, he says, don't awaken love until it pleases. It means you have the ability to, to awaken love anyway. You have the ability to awaken love anyway. So don't let your feelings just because you're attracted to them. No, I, I always say my number one rule for love and relationship and dating is don't let your, 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 your emotions, your heart take you on a journey and leave your brain behind. Your brain and your spirit man should be alert and active. Ask yourself, what is, where is this man going? Is he even going the same? Even if he's in purpose, is his purpose in line with my own purpose? So I established all that singlehood is not a time when you are desperate, be believing God for, for who to marry. No, it's a time when you discover yourself, discover your, your potentials, discover why God created you. Never you let your heart take you on a journey and you leave your brain and your spirit behind. No, go along with all of them. Yes, of course. Of course, you are already attracted to the man physically. But there is more than physical attraction. Yes, he's tall, he's handsome, he has six packs. Six packs, so bloody what? I've not seen a marriage that succeeded because the man had six packs. As a matter of fact, give those six packs a matter of just some time. It's going to turn into one. You think I'm joking, as to us, nigger? <laughs> just a matter of time, it will take. So if you limit. And you are choosing your kingdom spouse based on his tall, his handsome, he has dark hair and, and six packs. You, you, you are making a mistake. Is he in purpose? And he, if he is in purpose, what exactly is the purpose? Is the purpose in line with my own purpose? Are we going the same direction? So before you cross on a man, don't let your heart know. Sometimes you've got to call, call your heart and tell you to command it to sit down and calm down. Sometimes you've got to look at them and, and then he smiles at you and you turn your face. You know you don't have the capacity to be a pastor's wife. You know you don't have what it takes. You don't have the, the patience. You don't have a pray, prayer life. You don't have, you are not called. You don't want anything to do with ministry. Even if the pastor is as handsome as an angel that disappeared from heaven. You've got to educate your heart and tell your heart it's not for you. Hey, the mother of Lemuel, I, I believe it should be Psalms 31, the first verses. It advises him, it's, 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 oh, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. I'm doing the best I can to teach this thing. Tell your heart to sit down. He says, he, she, 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 she's educating her son. And she says, it's not for kings. He says, he says, wine, alcohol. It's not for kings. Oh, Lemuel, it's not for kings. Sometimes you've got to tell your flesh to calm down. Sometimes you've got to tell your flesh to stop noise. Sometimes when your flesh begins to make requests for things that you know are going to destroy you, you've got to command it to stay quiet. He says, alcohol is not for kings. It's not for kings. Yes, do you feel as to drink it sometimes? Yes, you feel as to drink, but you've got to tell yourself, kings don't drink alcohol. He says, give wine to those who are perishing. And so sometimes you've got to, yes, I feel like it, but I am not perishing. I feel like it, but I'm a king. It's not for kings. It's for those who are perishing. The same way, when you feel like your heart is taking you in a direction where, how, what are you doing with someone that doesn't even have an altar of love for you? They tell you they love you, but they beat you up mercilessly. And you're there, you bet, but I love him, he loves me. Because he said in action speaks louder than words. A man that beats a woman doesn't know anything. Someone tells you they don't fear God, they have no respect. They don't fear God, they don't fear man, and you're there. And you're there. Oh, I feel like I'm preaching good. You guys, you've got, you've got to, to come on. We are the people even motivating me, telling me, Pastor, you are teaching good. So the second thing you've got to look out for is that this man should be a man that loves God, a man that is in the presence. You know why this is necessary? Because in the book of Ephesians, in the book of Ephesians, the Bible tells us. 
Amen, Delilah. The Bible tells us that a man is supposed to love his wife as Christ loves the church. The man is supposed to. The man is supposed to love the wife as Christ loves the church. So if the man is not in Christ in the first place, how is the man going to even know how Christ loves the church? So the love that the man is supposed to have for his wife is not just any kind of love. There is a standard for it. There is a standard for it. And for you to reach that standard, you've got to be in Christ. For you to know that standard, you've got to be in Christ. That's why we have people that, because they don't know how Christ loves the church. They don't know that the, the love of God has not been revealed to them. So they can't love another person right. That's why you have someone who is just using you. And at the end of the day, they, they, they dump you like you were hot. They drop you without looking back. Because they don't know exactly how God loves. They don't have the nature of God. Love is the nature of God. And for you to love the God kind of way, you've got to have the nature of God in you. It takes someone who is habitually in the presence of God to have that nature. So a man will never even know how to love a woman right if they are not in Christ. If they are not in Christ. I believe I'm talking to Christians. And then after that, the, 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 the Bible says God put him there to work and then to keep the garden, to tend the garden. Another Bible version says to cultivate. And to cultivate something means you make it better. You make it better than it was when, when, when you met it. And it, it was everything in the garden, including the woman. Meaning the man that is supposed to be your husband should be a man that, will, that, has, the, what, that has what it takes to make you better. The moment you encounter them, your work life becomes better. Your prayer life becomes better. Your spiritual life becomes better. That man that is making you stay away from the presence of God. That man that is stopping you from praying wants to kill you. That is not a kingdom spouse. Oh, the problem is that we have, we have misused words. And everyone is looking for kingdom spouse. People have given me prayer requests to pray for my kingdom spouse to come back. And, they, and, and then when I start talking to them, I realize who they are calling a kingdom spouse doesn't even know God, talk, talk less of knowing the kingdom. They are, they are nowhere close to the kingdom. That is not a kingdom spouse. That's not a kingdom spouse. Kingdom spouse means a, your God ordained spouse that was given to you by God so that together the two of you can fulfill the purpose of which you were sent into the kingdom of God. Shomani, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. So glad to have you join us. Thank you, family, for joining us. Please, if you are just joining us, just Comment, let me know you are there, and then like the video. Give the video a thumbs up, please. Let's do that. And if you can share it, share it for me. Let's do that. So it means the man should be able to make you better, not worse. So when you encounter someone, and you are not drinking alcohol, and you were diligent with your service to God, with your work with God, and all of a sudden, you start fornicating. You start drinking alcohol. You start skipping your services. That's not a kingdom spouse. That's not a kingdom spouse. A kingdom spouse will make you better. You know why? I, let, let's go back. If we go back, it's just that we don't. We are running out of time. We don't have the time to go back to read that Ephesians chapter chapter five. But maybe probably tomorrow we are going to read it. Because it doesn't just say it goes further. No, let's 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 read it. Let, let, let me go there. Let's read it. Let's read it. We need to read it so that you don't think so that you don't think the pastor is teaching us heresy. So you don't say the pastor is teaching us strange things. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 25. It says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. And gave himself for it. Is that man ready to sacrifice himself for you? Is he ready to, 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 to make himself uncomfortable so that you can be comfortable? 
He says they should love as Christ loved the church that he gave himself. Are they willing to sacrifice something for themselves just so that they can get something that you need? Can they go an extra mile just to make you happy? Now, as I'm talking, some of you will start realizing you have been you have been in love with your bondage. And you thought that was your kingdom spouse. And you are giving prayer points for men and women of God to do magic. Please don't feel offended. Oh, I, it, it's just what pastors take and they talk anyhow. He says that me that he might, as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. <laughs> Judy, I should not don't worry, I cannot kill you. I want you alive, I need you. <laughs> you see that because that this is the standard. It, it says Christ sanctified and cleansed the, the, his own bride, the church, as Christ loved the church. He sanctified and cleansed it with the by washing it with the water of the word. That he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. No blemish. So the man is supposed to make you better. I started saying this yesterday. Rico, you are Rico Music Lover. Thank you for joining us. You are welcome. So the man is of the reason why God says the man should cultivate. It means the man that is able that you should consider as a kingdom spouse should be able to make you better that's why we are going to see the very next thing god gave the man his word so he should be a man that has the word of god so that he can use because it's by the word of god that he's going to cleanse you we just read it he says he cleansed it with with, with, with his by the washing with, or, 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 of the water of water by the word he says so he can present it to himself like not having any spot without wrinkle, without blemish. But that it should be holy and without any blemish. So they, 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 that's what Christ does. We come into church the way we are and then he begins to cleanse us with his word so that at the end of the day he presents us to himself as holy and, and without blemish. As holy and without blemish. That's what Christ that's how Christ loves. So the man that is, is qualified to be a kingdom spouse is a man that is supposed to cultivate you and make you better. So that at the end of the day, he is supposed to present you to himself. That's why immediately after this, the next thing that God gave was his instruction. The next thing that God gave the man was his word. So that the man can be able to use that word. And, and then make sure that he cleanses the woman. So it doesn't matter how you came. But if after two years, that's what I was saying yesterday, Pastor Rich was like, Pastor, what are you talking about? Like people come from different cultures and different backgrounds. Yes, I, you got, I got married from my own culture and from my own background. But my husband is supposed to cultivate me and align me so that I can adapt to his own culture. Because I am no more, I cannot be in my husband's house and I'm living in my husband's house with everything I brought from my father's house. So if I am in my husband's house, I've got to align to my husband's house. So I will not be in my husband's house and I'm cooking my father's favorite meal. I will not be in my husband's house and I'm doing things the way they were done in my father's house. So my husband has the right to cultivate me, to teach me the way he wants things to be done, to make me better. So that at the end of one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, he can present me to himself like this. This is the wife of my youth. This is the wife that God blessed me with. She is just the way I want her to be. So a good man is going to cultivate you. A good man doesn't tell you you have, you have, you have, you have become fat and ugly because you started giving birth. No, a good man will register you in the gym and fill the, 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 the fridge with, with vegetables so that you can lose weight and be the woman he saw and he loved and he fell in love with. A good man is not just going to condemn you and tell you you are so stupid and you are dull. Some of us have been so insulted until we are suffering from low self-esteem. And nothing you do, you feel like you are not good enough. You can't do anything well. Because that 
after no 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 if after five years of marriage you are still insulting her telling her she's stupid she is she 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 is funny she is dirty it means that you are you yourself you are foolish you are stupid and you are dirty because it means you have a shortcoming there is something you failed to do oh we are the men in this place come on no one is telling no one is saying a seat for this no one is saying a seat pastor is not preaching good enough no one is saying you want me to just come and say i god is giving you kingdom spouse and then you say pastor i'm connecting for my kingdom spouse this is a better giving of kingdom spouse than than declaration So the man should be able to cultivate you, to make you better. So when you encounter a man, and then you realize you've got to go back, I call it a reality check. I do it very often, even with when it, pertaining to my Christian world with God, pertaining to myself as a wife, as a mother, I do it often. Say that relationship. What value has it added to my life? What value has this added to my life? What value has this man added to my life? How is this man making my life better? How am I getting better from the time I met them? If you realize that from the time you met them, all of a sudden you used to be happy. Now you are bitter. You are angry most of the time. You don't have peace. You worry. You worry about where he is, what he's doing. You don't even trust him. You used to have trust, but now you're having trust issues. Not all of this is... That is not cultivating you. That's why the man has got to have the word and be willing and understand his place so that he can be willing to teach you. When he complains about something, tell him, help me. I am here to help you. But for me to be a good help me to you, you've got to teach me so that I know exactly which part of your life needs help. So I can know exactly how to help you. I just entered into your life from maybe another country, another region, another state, another family, another upbringing, another culture, another environment, another society. You cannot just expect me to become the person you want me to be. You've got to teach me. Irene, thank you for joining us. Irene, you're welcome. You've got to teach me how to be the person, the wife that you want me to be. So a good husband is a teacher. He understands how to teach. He understands how to cultivate you, how to make you better. So man, before you complain about that wife of yours in the next one, two years, before you complain, check yourself. Every, every wrinkle, every spot, every blemish that you see in your wife is a pointer to where you failed. Oh, men don't like this kind of teaching. Men like it when you say the woman is supposed to do what the man wants. No, no, before I get to do what you want, you've got to teach me. I told us yesterday, my father says, always tells us, that never you expect something from someone you have not taught. Amen, Irene, amen. Never you expect something from someone you have not taught. Are we together? He says, so men ought to love their wives as their own bodies. A man that loves his body will not hit himself. So if you love your wife, you will not beat them up. Now, now I'm, get, I, I'm, I'm getting to someone. Those who have been in bondage calling it kingdom, kingdom spouse. He says, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife, loveth himself. If you love your wife, you love yourself. Because the two become one flesh. So any man that beats the woman, that abuses the woman, that takes anything by force, that rapes the wife. Oh, yes, 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 that is possible. Doesn't love you. The man that intimidates you. And you do things that you don't want to do. Such a man doesn't love you. Come on, I'm not getting the comment. Only particular people are commenting. We have more than 29 people following us. 
and you are not having more than or, 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 up to five people commenting it means the session is it means i should end the session if you are just joining us you are welcome please leave a comment leave a comment leave a comment if you are not feeling blessed then don't waste your time but if you are feeling blessed the right thing to do is for you to comment amen and what is the next thing that you should expect okay okay let me keep going the next thing that you should expect from a man that is ready the bible says god tested him <laughs> a lot of work to do don't worry andrew it's because i'm dealing with the men right now don't worry calm down i'm coming to the part of the women when i reach the part of the women you are going to know that you men are fine <laughs> so women feel free right now this is your time they <laughs> I'm in your favor right now, so feel free. Andrew, you guys have a lot of work to do, but you have a lot of work to do. That's the truth. So the very next thing that God did was to give Vincent, thank you so much for joining us. Elizabeth, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us. God gave the man a test. God gave a man, the man a test to see if the man would come to the realization that he needed help. To see if the man would come to the realization that he needed help. Oh, you agree with me? That's awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ladies, Andrew says, enjoy it while it lasts. So God gave a test to see if the man was mature enough to realize that he's at the point where he needs. So I started by saying God gives you a spouse when you need them, not when you want. When you want, it's mostly about sex. The man that needs a spouse will not meet you and put pressure on you to sleep with them. And they are telling you, if you love me, then you give me sex. Then you sleep with them, you prove it by sleeping with me. And, 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 and all the women who are so momotious. We are so foolish that you just me and then you're like, I just met this guy and he might be my kingdom spouse. He really loves me and he says I should prove my love for him by sleeping with him. He's going to sleep with you and dump you because love is not, is not equated to sex. Love is not synonymous to sex. There is true love without sex. As well as there is sex without love. If you, are, if you think I'm joking, as a prostitute. If everyone you slept is is someone, oh thank you Delilah. If everyone you slept with is someone that you love, that 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 you love, then the prostitute who should be in love with all their customers, right? With all their clients. So when a man knows that he needs a wife, he doesn't go out looking for who to sleep with. No, he's looking for who can compliment him. He's looking for who is suitable. He's looking for who is adaptable. He is searching in line with his purpose. So it's not about whether the, gay, the lady has the butt and the, and, the, uh, uh, and the boobs that he's looking for. It's not about the shape, whether the, whether the lady is figurehead or Coca-Cola shape. No, it's, it's, it's about if this lady has what it takes. If this lady can be a mother, is she responsible? Can she raise up my children in the ways of God? Is she God-fearing? So the, 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 the things that she's looking for. Mind you, I, I, I started by establishing the fact that the Bible, don't, let, don't, don't, be, don't be deceived by love, by, by the feeling of love. Because the Bible says, do not awaken love when it doesn't please. It means you can awaken love anyway. You can awaken love anyway. Oh, come on, ladies. Are there ladies here? There is a way a, a guy treats you. And the first time you saw him, you felt like you should vomit. But there is a kind of treatment that they treat you, you forget about how they look physically. There is a kind of royalty treatment that a guy gives you. And then you remember the way Prince Charming rough handled your heart. And you left there with your heart shattered into pieces. You forget about looks. 
Because it's not, anyone can awaken love anyway. So it's not about, that's why God never asked the man to marry who he loves. God says, love the one you marry. Love your wife, not love, not marry the wife you love. He says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. And then, uh, 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 that's, that's in Proverbs. And then he goes in the Ephesians that we read. And he says, come on. Love your wife as Christ loves the church. He didn't say marry the woman you love. He says love the one you marry. Oh, I, 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 I just shattered someone's excuse for divorce. Say, I don't love you anymore. God didn't tell you to marry who you love. God said you should love the one you marry. It was a command. Come on, I'm teaching. If no one saw the seed right now, I'm not. We are, we are ending. It's already one hour even. I'm not continuing. Come on. If I was making declarations and praying again, tomorrow I'll come and I, I will not teach again. We will pray against those who have been eating in their dreams. <laughs> I'm teaching good and you guys can't appreciate it. No. No one is saying, Pastor, you are teaching good. This is helping me. I'm not, if I don't see the dollar sign, tomorrow we pray warfare prayers. <laughs> Thank you, Vincent. I need more motivation. You guys are just fooling me now because I said it. I need more motivation. I want to, there is super chat. There is super sticker. There is super tanks. There is cash up. There is PayPal. There is mobile money. What do you want to use? Come on. I'm giving myself, I'm pouring myself out. These are things you hear in marriage seminars. Guess what? You pay for them. You pay for them. And you don't pay cheap for them. This is more important than me praying for you to have a kingdom spouse. Because you having having a kingdom spouse is one thing. Maintaining the marriage and be and having a blissful marriage is another. This is the knowledge that will not just ensure that you have a kingdom spouse, but will ensure that you have marital bliss. Because when you know this, you marry right. You will not come for me to pray whether the, this is the right kingdom spouse. No, you when you look at them just with eyes eye gauge, you know whether they are the ones for you or they are distraction. So I, I told us yesterday, marriage is not a concept for babies. Marriage is not a concept for babies. So a man should come of age. That's why, and then the very next thing that you should be looking out for in a man, then the very next thing, after the man gets to the point where he realizes that marriage is a necessity for them at this point, the very next thing that God says is, this man should leave his father and his mother. A man that is still close to their father and their mother is a baby. Marriage is not for boys. He, he didn't say a boy shall leave his father. He said a man. Those who have left their father and their mother are men. Real men are ready for marriage. So if you are dating a guy and he, he, he needs to hear from his mother whether to buy you a gift for Christmas, whether to buy you a gift for Valentine's, he needs to hear from the mom. The mother is the one determining when you give birth. The mother is the one determining who he gets married to. The mother is the one telling you how to treat him. The mother is the one, every decision you take, he goes and he passes the decision through the mom. Let the mom advise him. And no, I'm not saying it, it, it's bad for, the, for a mother to advise. But when everything runs back to the mother, uh, he, then that's just a mommy's boy. That is not a kingdom spouse. Run away from such because the mother is going to run your life. And very soon they are going to, if they realize you are not doing things according to their dictate, they are going to look for another wife for him who is going to come and say yeah and amen to everything the mother-in-law says. So they are going to change. So every time you see, he says this man should be should have what it takes to leave his father and his mother and then become one flesh with you. A man cannot become one flesh with you if they are still close to, to, their, their, to their father and mother. They are living under, they are, they are living in their father's house. They have a room. The one to get married to you, they have a room in their father's house. That's not a kingdom spouse. That's, that, that, that's still a boy. That's a kingdom boy. They are living in their father. They are still taking an allowance from their father. That's a kingdom boy. It's okay. I understand that sometimes life happens. And, and he, he could lose his job. And then get to a point where the parents help and support. But I'm not. I'm talking about someone who is habitually on an allowance. That's a baby. That's a boy. Marriage is not for them. Such doesn't need a wife. Wives are for those who need it. 
Such doesn't need a wife. Oh, yes, Delilah. And if he needs the... Oh, come on, Sopha. You see why I miss you? <laughs> Sopha, I miss you. Come on, people. See what Sopha just did. And that's how you do when a woman of God is teaching well. Nora, you're welcome. Nora, you've got to go back and replay this session. Come on, people. If, 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 you, if you have a conscience, do what Sopha just did. If you get the if you have a conscience, those of you watching me and you know that you you you, you could just click your phone and and, and, and send a super thanks. You are wicked. <laughs> you are wicked. You are, you are not nice. You are not nice. <laughs> God bless you for that suffer. God bless you. So a woman, a, a man that is still glowed and taking orders from the father and the mother on how to treat you, they are not ready for marriage. They are not ready for marriage. And then, oh, Andrew, we are, Andrew, are you still there? Today we, 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 we are out of time, so we are only succeeding to deal with the men. Don't worry, men, come tomorrow prepared because we will be handling the woman tomorrow. So come prepared. <laughs> And then the last but not the least, the Bible says the man and the woman were naked but not ashamed. They were naked but not ashamed of each other. They were naked but not ashamed. Nakedness doesn't just talk about physical nakedness. Physical nakedness is a, is a part of it. Can that man open up to you and not hide anything? Are they honest with you? Can they tell you about their, 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 their ugly past? Are they truthful to you? They have a child before they made you. Did they tell you that? Did they tell you they were once married and they got divorced? Did they tell you they, were, they, 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 are, they are suffering? They, they have a problem with, with drugs. Did they tell you about the, the weaknesses they are struggling with? Because this is your head meat. This is someone that has become one with you. So you should be naked before them. It means you can open up to them and not be ashamed. You were tempted at your job site. Who else can, are you going to open up to? If not to your wife. Oh yes, you fell into the temptation. And you slept with another. Come and confess. Let her slaughter you. But at the end of the day, she will forgive you. Nothing is hidden under the sun. When you keep it secret, you are going to continue. It stops being a mistake. The moment you hide it, you continue looking for ways to cover it. And then sin becomes comfortable when hidden. But if you confess and you tell them, I, so I, 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 I'm a disgrace. I, I hate you. I betrayed you. I did something wrong. I don't know what happened, but I messed up. I'm sorry. They are going to be angry. They will be heartbroken, but they will forgive you. But the thing is, if you don't say it, if you are not naked, if you are not open, the thing is you will start hiding it, and then the relationship will continue. And then very soon, men are very predictable. You guys don't even know how to cheat. I don't know why you cheat more. Very soon, your phone starts ringing and you start re rejecting calls. Very soon, you put your phone on silence. Very soon, you start sending, you, you start talking, chatting much. Why people are sleeping you are on your phone, sending messages. Very soon, you start feeling pressed. Whenever your phone rings and you think we are not seeing. Because the woman has the ability to take note of details. Very soon you come with sex ties that have never been seen in your marriage since you got married. All of a sudden you want to hang your wife on the ceiling before you have sex. And it's like, where is this coming from? No, you met someone that told you something. It certainly didn't come from her. 
That's not what used to happen. So the woman is, your wife is going to know you are cheating on her. But if you fell the first time and you came and you cried, we can understand that. Oh, sorry. This is Purpose and Marita Bliss. <laughs> so I say it as it is. So naked and not ashamed means that Malaika, you're welcome. Naked and not ashamed means you, are, you, 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 can, you can confide in your wife. They are your best friend. You can tell them absolutely anything and not be ashamed. You can strip yourself naked before them and not be ashamed. It's not in front of your wife where you claim to be strong. Valeria, you are welcome. It's not before your wife where you claim to be strong. You know you are vulnerable. Let her know you are vulnerable. Let her know you are dealing with some things. Let her know you are struggling so that she can even know how to intercede for you. So she can even know where to help you. So she can know how to take you out of that addiction. It's not in, the mistake we make is that you want to appear strong before you help me. She is in your life because you need help in the first place. So how dare you claim as if you are all strong and you have everything going well. I started by establishing the, the difference between the man and the woman. And I said the man has the, the, the physical strength, the woman has the capacity, the internal strength. Come on. I always give this example and I'm rounding up here. You guys are not, no, no one has even decided to sue to say, well, woman of God, you are teaching well. It's not nice. I'm rounding up here. If I was to carry the table that I'm sitting on, and it's heavy for me. And I dis and, and, and I realize that I need help. I don't call, I, 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 I will not call my five years old daughter to come and help me carry the table. I'll call someone that is probably stronger than me. So most likely I'll call my husband because he has the physical strength to come and help me. So that we can carry together all. Oh, oh, my kingdom spouse is so strong. He will just carry the table by himself and tell me, step behind, let me carry it for you. So when, 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 when you are needing help, help doesn't come to you. God doesn't send to you someone who is weaker than you to help you. God sends to you someone who is stronger. When it is recorded, let it be recorded today. It is not belittling. That the woman is stronger than the man. All the man has, or most of what the man has, is the physical strength. And that's why when they go and get stuff, that's what they want to use against the woman. But the woman comes with a build up. With an extra strength to help the man's destiny. Come on, the Bible says one chases a thousand, two chases ten thousand. It means the woman brings nine thousand to the table. The woman comes equipped. The, the brain of the woman has been equipped to help the man. That's why we are multitaskers. The man can only focus on one thing at a time. The moment the man is watching his favorite spot, whatever you are telling him, you are wasting your time. They can't hear you. Except you, 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 you pause what they are watching. And then they turn to you and they give you the attention. So if God sends you someone who is stronger or more equipped to help you and then you are hiding your, 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 the, the aspects of your life that need help from them. It means you didn't understand their role in your life. It means you missed out. And then the other aspect of the nakedness, of course, I'm not saying it, no one is showing. We end here, just begin to thank God. <laughs> Come on, you need to sow before I say that last one. Give your offering, give your offering. The Bible said it. I'm preaching the Bible, right? I'm preaching the Bible. I'm using the word of God. God is the one who instituted marriage. So there is no way we can talk about marriage and not go back to the word of God. Tomorrow, ladies, don't be too excited. 
The men have done their role today. They have had their own part today. So Jubilee, why it lasts? Tomorrow is your own turn. Come on, just begin to thank God for this session. If you were truly blessed, thank God. And this is the time you give an offering. If you were truly blessed, it's the time for you to give an offering. Tell God, thank you for this teaching. Thank you that I heard this. And now I'm very serious. If, if none of you gives an offering, tomorrow I'm going to come and we'll pray warfare prayers. Just begin to thank God. We are out of time, Victoria. We are out of time. Just begin to thank God. It's a time for you to give your offerings. So you are seed, give your offering, whatever your donation, your partnership, whatever thanksgiving, whatever you are led to do. We are still in a month of thanksgiving, though. If you are not done that and you feel like you have reason to thank God for this year, we are still open for thanksgiving. Come on, we have one to two minutes for that. My cash app, PayPal, mobile money are pinned on, are in the description box. Check the description box for that. Oh, Andrew had a wonderful time. That's awesome. You guys need to motivate me for me to come. Otherwise, I'll leave this information. I'll keep it to myself. In the next two to three years, even the next one year, you are going to pay for it. You, you register for marriage for a marriage seminar. I'll organize it on this platform. You register for it. If you cannot just say thank you, Lord, for this word. I'll keep the wisdom to myself. My own marriage is succeeding. <laughs> I already used it. I married right. And my marriage is very blissful. So if you don't, if you cannot say thank you, I'll keep it for myself. In the next one year, when I'm having at least 100 to 200 people in my life session, I'm going to organize a marriage seminar. And it's going to be on Zoom. I, I wanted to start doing that, but I just felt like, no, at this point where, like, I shouldn't make it a registered thing. Like, let me just, for the privilege of those who are there to see my humble beginning, my little beginning. We have one more minute. Yes, Nora, please do. The Emperoress, wow. <laughs> the Emperoress, thank you for joining us. You are welcome. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Oh, amen, Vincent, amen, amen. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you abundantly. In fact, because of Vincent and Sopha, let me finish the, the last part of the nakedness. Normally, the man, there is just, it's natural that when you are married, when you are, when you are not married, right, you can be ashamed, physically ashamed of each other. You can be physically ashamed of each other. But the day you realize your wife is ashamed of you, the day you realize your husband is ashamed to be naked before you physically know something is terribly wrong. No, they are hiding something grievous from you. The Bible says they were, they were naked but not ashamed. The day they sinned, their eyes opened and they became ashamed of each other. In Genesis chapter 3, the day they ate of the forbidden fruit, their eyes opened and they became ashamed. The reason why they were not just ashamed of God. The Bible said they meet fig leaves and they covered themselves with the fig leaves. It means just between themselves, they were already ashamed. And when God was coming, despite the, the fig leaves still could not hide their nakedness. They still hid from the presence of God. Meaning they were ashamed of each other and they were ashamed. When sin steps into your marriage, you become ashamed of each other. This last point, it applies to both the man and the woman. You become ashamed of each other. The moment you realize that your husband, your, your spouse is not comfortable being naked around you. 
or they don't want to have sex there. They are too tired and you, and you don't know any extra thing they are doing. That gets them extra tired. The Bible tells us in the book of 1 Corinthians, he says the body of the woman belongs to the husband and the, and the body of the husband belongs to that of the wife. There is this partiality that men make. And many women have followed it and, and, and it, it, it seems like it's always the man that should feel like to have sex. So the man should be the one that makes the first move. The woman's body belongs to the man and the man's body belongs to the woman. So the moment you see that you are spouse, so when sin steps in, shame also steps in. When sin steps in, nakedness becomes a problem. It becomes, they, be, they begin to feel uncomfortable to open up before you to, 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 to pour out their heart to you. They become uncomfortable talking to you. They become uncomfortable being naked before you. That, 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 that one, that's just an extra bonus for Vincent and Sopha. And everyone that connected by seat on Cash App on PayPal. God bless you all. God bless you for your seat. Let me connect you to your seat and make this prayer for you. I pray for you. May you never marry wrong in the name of Jesus. As you have heard these things, you will never make a wrong choice when it comes to choosing a spouse in the mighty name of Jesus. And for those who are already married, your marriage is becoming blissful in the mighty name of Jesus. Your marriage is becoming blissful in the mighty name of Jesus. Your marriage is becoming blissful in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I connect you to your seat and I decree. By as you hear these things, this, these words are coming to prepare you. They are coming to make you a wife, a spouse. As you hear these words, your kingdom spouse is coming for you. Or you are locating your kingdom spouse in the mighty name of Jesus. God is making you and God will use your marriage to be a model marriage in the kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus. Diane, you're welcome. Please, if you are just joining us, then you've got to go back and replay this session. You can't miss out on this session. If you are just joining us, go back and replay the session. And if this was the first time you are joining us, God bless you amazingly. Thank you so much. We have been praying and trusting God for someone, for you to join us. And today you made it. Congratulations. I love you so much with every part of my being. I've been waiting for you anxiously. If you have not subscribed to Purpose and Marita, please, please do subscribe. And don't forget that notification bell. So that every time a new content is uploaded, you will be notified. Every time we are live, you will be notified. Tomorrow, today was the day for the men. Tomorrow is the day for the women. He who finds a wife, finds a good thing. There are women and there are wives. What qualifies you to graduate from a woman to a wife? We'll be seeing that tomorrow. If you are here and you are believing God for a wife, then you've got to be there tomorrow. To know the kind of woman you are looking for. So that when you see a wife, you'll be able to identify. I, you, so you'll be able to identify who will bring favor. Because only when you find a wife, that's when you find a good thing and you obtain favor. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. And may he be gracious to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, family. I love you all so much. Bye-bye. 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 Please share this. If you know of someone that needs to hear all these things. Oh, see you later, Delilah. Please, if you know someone that needs to hear these things, invite them for, for our next session. Share the links for the past, for the previous sessions. Many people don't know this. Many people are not aware. Many people want, they need to hear this. Amen. Do a friend a favor. Do a family member a favor. Someone is struggling somewhere because they don't know this. Because they're, they're in, in error. Please share it. Tomorrow I want to see us have 50 people here. Do we have a deal? I want to see us up to 50 here. Invite someone. Make sure you come with someone. You share the link. When I share the other session, share the link. Let someone join. Let's have at least 50 people join us tomorrow. Are we together? Who is with me on that? Before you go, who is with me on that? Who is going to invite someone tomorrow? Show a hand. 
if you are going to invite someone tomorrow. Amen, the emperoress. Amen. It's okay, Victoria, we are together. It's God that gives seed to the sewer and bread to the eater. So he knows you don't have. Okay, Andrew is coming together tomorrow with someone. Come on, is it only Andrew here that was blessed enough that thinks some other person should hear this? Is it only Andrew? Come on, I want to see this particular, this live session go viral. I want to see that you shared it, you sent it. Okay, Victoria is going to do that. I want to see the views of this particular session. I want to see the views go viral. I want to have the highest views I've ever had in a live session after this. Because the number of my audience is not just those who were there live. There are people who come after. Oh, come on, Andrew. When you have the desire, God will convict them to come. Invite and God will convict them. Just invite as many as possible. God will give you a tithe of the number you have invited. Meaning if you invite 10, you have one join. At least. If you invite 20, you can have two at least join. And if God convicts them, they, guess what? Someone's marital destiny could just be waiting for you, for you to send that link. Someone is about to make a wrong choice and their destiny is dependent on your ability to share the link. God can just use you to reach out to someone. Amen. Oh, I've got to go, family. God bless you all. Love you all so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.